People, 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 good evening, good evening, good evening. You already know who it is, Arsenio Buck, reporting live from Bangkok. Oh my god, you guys are probably wondering why. What the hell are you doing a podcast at night for? You don't, you normally don't have that much energy. Well, guys, some things happen. Some things happen the last 24 hours. Well, not 24 hours anymore because I hurry up and cut off the snake's head. But my goodness, there was just one thing after another after another, and it went for about 24 hours. And then I said to myself, I said, you know what, my day is going to go unbelievably horribly wrong. That I I actually almost got a phone call right now. Uh, I decided that... <laughs> <laughs> that I needed to somehow cut the snake's head off. So, what did I do by that? I decided to just evaluate the entire situation. So, from you guys, if you guys are listening to this for the first time, I live in Thailand, okay? Obviously, I said Bangkok, Thailand. So, every 90 days, a foreigner has to go for a report at immigration. And by immigration, I, I don't know what this is. Uh, we probably all know what it is, but I won't even go to say it because it's not even worth saying it. But we have to go for this 90-day report just to show up and say, yeah, I'm here, no problems. And now they're charging for us to show up and to just poke our head through an office door. And now they're asking us for money. So that was it. It wasn't the money, of course. It was just, wow, you guys didn't do this three months ago. Any other things that you guys are planning on trying to throw at us, foreigners? And I said, you know what, <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave every three months. I'm going to make sure I leave every three months, okay, just so I don't have to pay this fee. Yes, am I willing to literally pay 300 to 500 U.S. dollars to take a vacation every three months, which I normally do anyways, but am I willing to do that out of the sake of not paying a $2 show-up fine? Absolutely, as long as I don't put money into the, into the pockets of you-know-who. You know what I mean? In terms of, I, I don't like supporting corruption, guys. It's just, I, I think it's wrong, and I think there's some things that need to be cleared out. And so, if I could somehow say, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, I'm just going to go and travel. By all means, let's do it. So, anyway, so I went back home. That didn't really throw off the trajectory of my day. But, of course, I had a wonderful power nap, as a matter of fact. But when I went home, it was an infestation, guys. Now, for those of you who do not know, I live in a beautiful condominium. It's probably the best one in uh, this area that I'm living in. And you know what? It just got built, okay? It's always up, tidy, wonderful services. Uh, everything is going on. It's a community here. So I went home. I went into my kitchen. And you know what? I've been having a couple of little, a little critters pop up every now and then. No, they're not big. They're small. But it doesn't matter if they're big or small. It's the fact it matter it. The fact the matter is, is that they're pretty much popping up and I'm getting pissed off about it. So I walked in my kitchen, I looked to my left, looked at the wall, and I said, okay, there's nothing on the wall. Okay, this is going to be a good night. And it's crazy because, you know, I always say it's crazy because I looked at the kitchenette where basically you wash your hands, you have a sink, you have a cupboard, open the covers, there's two layers of shelves that you could put stuff on. I looked in there, and it was hell on earth. There's about five of them. I dropped my head, and I just, there were so many emotions that were going through me. And it's kind of like you guys are saying, it's like, oh, okay, come on. It's just a couple of, you know, little roaches. I don't give a damn. The fact of the matter is they're in my place not paying any rent. And they're making it look disgusting. And they're making my place unwelcoming. And now I'm worrying about this and that and this and that and all this other stuff. And so I had to spray down this place with this spray. And luckily, I probably killed the majority of them. At least 98% of them. Uh, and of course, you know, every 10 minutes I went in there, there was always some dead ones, dead ones over and over. I'm telling you this because, well, I let it spill over into my dreams. Yes. Cockroaches in my dreams. Why? Because I was so worried about waking up in the middle of the night and there just being a bunch of them again. Were there? No. But the fact of the matter is, I let it loophole over to the next morning. Went into, of course, my toilet in the morning. Uh, well, my toilet, yeah, that's what the English say, but I went into my restroom in the kitchenette in the morning, no problems, no signs of anything and whatnot, but the stench was unbelievable, and that actually gave me a headache last night, because I guess I was just breathing and inhaling too many of those toxic fumes, and next thing I had a headache, woke up with a headache at about 1, 1 to 1.30 a.m., and I was just like, oh my god, this is a pain in the ass, <sighs> so, I woke up in the morning, of course, I wasn't in a good mood. I said, Arsenio, how can I disrupt this biochemistry right now? How can I disrupt what's going on within me right now? And I said, go running. So I went running, did a hell of a run. 
came back home. I got back to it. Next thing you know, I went on YouTube and realized, oh my God, someone disliked my video on YouTube, which doesn't fucking matter. But I didn't take it to heart, but I saw it. And on top of everything that happened the day before, in terms of the infestation, loopholing into the morning, and seeing that, and of course, a podcast, you know, not there not being that many places, so many different things, guys. You don't even know. You don't even know half of it. But I said, you know what? Okay, forget it. And I said, okay, right now, it's about 9 a.m. I'm taking the bus. How am I feeling? Horrible. Why? Because of a lot of different things. And I asked myself, am I willing to pay the price? That's what of about what you know what's going to happen throughout the rest of this day because I'm telling you the morning makes everything and if I did not somehow just disrupt myself and the you know the chemistry and everything that was going on and just you know disrupt what was going on within my head and psychologically and all that it was just gonna fire back on me now of course this all stemmed about uh, you know another person who I mentioned so much on my podcast that person is gone. Okay, uh, for whatever reason, which is perfectly fine. Uh, Again, I don't know what that purpose was, and I'm going to have to evaluate it for the next year or so to figure out why that particular person actually came into my life to begin with, but it doesn't really matter, but that person's gone. A couple other people, a lot of things, you know what I'm saying. And so all these things just went up, and I said, okay, media purge. Media purge. Everything except the critters, of course, the critters from the the Jeepers Creepers, whatever you want to call them, the monsters that were just crawling all over the goddamn place in my kitchen. Other than that, everything else is out of my control. If people want to leave my life, hey, you know what? I got to let them go. If people want to walk out of my life, goodbye. All the best. Good riddance. Have a wonderful life. What else did I mention about something, you know, in terms of, you know, the immigration and stuff? I can't control that. Just do what I have to do. And then going forward. No more complaining. No more worrying about it. Okay, Arsenio, you're not happy about paying a $2 fee. We'll get the hell out of the country every three months. Fine, I will. Good. Done. That's already done. I'll never have to go back there for as long as I live. Ta-da! You see what I mean? Next, and of course, a couple other things in terms of comments and stuff like that. My podcast, having a little bit of a low pay and all this other, all this crazy stuff. I said, okay, okay. I'm going on this media purge. And that's the end of it. Because if I don't go on a media purge right now, my entire day is just going to fall flat. So I messaged a couple of people and I said, guys, look, I am not going to say anything. Okay, for, a, you know, for the remainder of this day, I'm just going to be away for a little bit. I just need to get my head right. And so the first thing I did, guys. So, again, that's the first clue. Okay, so if you're having a bad day and stuff like that and it's coming primarily from media... Turn off all your notifications and go on that purge for a little bit. Okay, it could be from 8 hours to 24 hours. Just go on the purge because it's a much needed purge so you can get your head right and refocus and reaffirm and figure and, you know, get back on track with what you are doing with your life. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Now, second part. I went into my job and, you know, a couple of people, hey, yeah, cool, yep, all right, went to my classroom. And the first thing first, you know, first thing was first, I actually blocked a couple of emails on my Outlook because I'm getting all these weird emails from these ridiculous scammers and all these fake emails and stuff. But I went on there and Vimeo came up and it said, Hodge Twins uploaded a new video. So I went on there. Here I am laughing my ass off before my student came in. Boom. There goes another one. So one of the key number two is what I'm telling you about right now is make yourself laugh. I mean, when I got on the bus before I even went to work. There was no Michael Bernard Beckwith that was going to help you help me this morning, okay? There was no law of attraction. There was no Lisa Nichols. There was nothing out there in terms of motivational speakers or anything that was going to help me at that specific moment. The only way to completely disrupt it all is to laugh. Switch up what's happening inside, start laughing, and change, just get off the frequency, And so how can you start doing that? Guys, there are a lot of different things. One of my favorite things especially are prank phone calls by Nephew Tommy. And I love it so much. Um, I could walk through shopping centers laughing my ass off. Like I said, I don't even look at people. I just laugh, 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 laugh. I'm going to laugh, and if you don't like it, get the hell out of my face. You know what I'm saying? Go F. Eddie Murphy on you guys. Now, that's what I normally do, and that's to get off the negative. Now, when I'm being really negative and I no longer have control of my thoughts or anything, I say, okay, I need to laugh so I can get back control of my thoughts so I can refocus on what I'm trying to do. 
Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Now, I went into another class, of course, in the afternoon. One of my students left a little bit early. I was very, very happy. Had a wonderful conversation with a book writer, as a matter of fact. And he gave me some excellent clues in terms of writing books. He told me something about four sections. Have your preface, your introduction. The second one is going to be, you know, okay, who are the people, the transgressions, and then the outcome. But the people need to take... He gave me so much useful information, and I'm so ecstatic now because... I was I was contemplated with the ghostwriter, and I'm like, okay, should I do this with the ghostwriter? But the ghostwriter just seemed they seemed like they were just so keen. Nobody knows my story. Nobody knows my story like I know my story, and that's the bottom line. Now, if I want an editor to actually edit a couple of things, you know, going forward and whatnot, that's perfectly fine. But no one knows my story like our or no one knows Arsenio's story like Arsenio knows his story. Period. So after getting some of that useful information, I told some of my students about, you know, the crazy problem that I had in terms of, you know, the, the infestation here. And they gave me some pointers. And then, and then another student, she just made me laugh my head off. I just have wonderful students. Every Saturday evening, I have the most remarkable students. And so I got back on my podcast after that because, of course, I was laughing a lot throughout the day. Well, somewhat. Well, first class, can't really remember. Yeah, we were talking about, like, technology and stuff like that and artificial intelligence. Second class, wonderful little young, uh, short, you know, small student. And then my last class is always a blast. And so I disrupted myself. I started laughing, got back on the right frequency, and then I started listening to podcasts again, such as, like, Gary V. you know, open up a couple things, say, okay, Arsenio, right when you go home, you're going to hurry up and handle this. You take a shower, see if there's any critters in there. Okay, no critters. I cleared them bastards out. Excuse my French. Cleared they ass out last night. Okay, come back in your room. Do your podcast. You're sitting under air conditioning. You're doing your podcast on your phone. You're going to write your nice little blog along with what you're going to talk about tomorrow morning. You're going to figure out your YouTube dates. You're going to do this and that and everything is just hunky-dory. This is how I do it, guys. Now, of course, it might be a little bit different from you. There's a lot of things. A lot of people would say, write down the things that you're grateful for. But the thing is, when you're negative and you're thinking about a lot of different things, what? it's so difficult to do just that. Well, in terms of me, okay, I'm only speaking from basically my personal experience. It's so difficult to do that. So what I do, obviously, is I basically tell myself, okay, well, it's time to laugh. Let me get my laugh on. And I laugh. And I read a couple of articles on some of the most spectacular uh, football games, college, Amer- American College University football games that are going to be happening tomorrow. Four top ten battles. Very excited about these teams and all this stuff. And, you know, it's just stuff that I can just watch and, you know, burn a couple brain cells while I'm commuting just a little bit. And, <sighs> Just grateful. Grateful as hell. It's going to be, well, I'm just shy of 8 p.m. right now. I'm going to write out this blog. I'm going to write down my list of grateful things to do. I'm going to do my meditation. I'm going to go to sleep before 9 p.m. I'm going to wake up on fire tomorrow, do my podcast, wake up, and we're going to be off to the right start again. And I need to start pushing a lot of different things. See, you could get off track, guys. It's all about cutting the snake's head off. Because if you don't, and you let the snake keep on going and going, if you cut the tail, it's going to keep coming back. And if it keeps coming back, it's going to keep on replicating and getting worse and worse and worse. And next thing you know, you're going to blow up on a colleague, and you're going to regret it. You're going to get called into an office, and they're going to say, hey, you know what? You're too black. You're too straight. You're too white. You're too... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) Anyways, no. uh, I just got completely off track there. But no, I'm just telling you guys what's going on. But um, those are a couple of things that I do. So I hope you guys can take this with you guys. I hope this guy I hope this does work for the most part. And I will be seeing you guys tomorrow morning early in the morning. And until then guys, you already know who it is. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host Arsenio as usual over and out. <laughs>